let's go ahead and get started with the difference between. Um, my name is Brandy Keeler. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions. I'll be giving today's presentation. And I'm also joined um, in the chat room by Carla Gonzalez, our Director of Undergraduate Admissions, and Patty Spencer, our Regional Recruiter here in Michigan. And they'll be helping to answer your questions along the way, as well as uh, post those links that I mentioned earlier. So the difference between, what will we be covering today? Um, this webinar is going to be especially helpful for folks who um, you know, you have two similar majors that you're interested in, but you want help possibly making a choice between the two, um, or you may have a dream career that seems to overlap majors, and you're not sure which path is the best to, to prepare you for that, that path, that career, um, or you have a lot of different interests, um, and you want to narrow your focus so you can explore more deeply um, a particular major. Um, this webinar is not necessarily the best if you're looking for a general overview of all of our majors. We actually have a separate recording of a webinar we recently did for that, where we go over all of the CCS admissions um, uh, requirements and the major. So you can find those things on our YouTube channel, and I'll have someone post that in, um, in the box, so you can click the URL to watch that. Um, so I'm going to stop my video so we can focus on the slides. Um, but yeah, it's, this is not uh, great also if you're looking for an exact science. So before we begin, I, I just need to note that college majors aren't an exact science and creative careers can take all kinds of twists and turns, right? Um, we have many graduates who work in the fields that they graduate, uh, they graduate from, right? That's obvious, but we have many stories also of, you know, students who came to CCS for fine arts who are working in the transportation design industry, or crafts graduates who are working as entertainment artists, or illustrators who are working as product designers and sculptors. There is no clear-cut path uh, to 100,000% guarantee where you'll, where you'll land, but a degree in art and design can lead to multiple creative careers, and especially with CCS curriculum, we teach students the type of critical thinking and professional skills that give graduates great flexibility and many options in their careers. So I wanted to make this point to say that, you know, choosing a major is less about a rigid path um, to a specific job and it's more about deepening exploration of a specific set of skills and knowledge that will prepare someone for you know a successful career. Um, that said, the career insights that I provide in today's presentation are generalizations and not an exact science. So I just want to make sure that's emphasized before we, we proceed. So let's get started. We're going to cover uh, the difference between illustration and entertainment arts, the difference between crafts and fine arts, the difference between advertising design and communications design, or as it's otherwise known, graphic design. We're going to talk about how fashion accessories design and product designers can both become footwear designers. Uh, we're going to talk about fashion accessories versus fibers and textiles design. We're going to examine industrial design and how three of our majors can land students in different aspects of the industrial design spectrum. And lastly, we're going to look at art education versus general education. So first up, we'll look at entertainment arts versus illustration. It's, it's oftentimes, this is the one that is the biggest confusion for folks. Um, and that's probably because we have students interested in working in the entertainment industry um, who love to draw and work on characters, right? So students sometimes say, I wanna design characters, or I wanna work on storyboards. I like the idea of working on comic books or making my own cartoon. What should I major in, right? Um, well, it's, it's hard because both majors require, you know, drawing skills and they develop a student's ability to tell stories visually, right? Um, but there are quite a few differences, actually. At CCS, we have four distinct majors under the umbrella of entertainment arts. So we have entertainment arts for animation, video game design, digital film, and concept design, right? And uh, for illustration, it's its own standalone major. As a visual storyteller, if you're interested in character work, the biggest difference between illustration and entertainment arts is that illustrators do the 2D version of a character and then pass it off to an animator or 3D modeler to make it come to life, right? So if you're interested in motion and, and the things that you're currently seeing on your screen, these are things that students are doing in the entertainment arts program at CCS, right? 
They are working on moving all these aspects, whether that's narrative filmmaking and shooting and directing and editing, whether that's for animation, things like you see here, working on the line work, the color work, the environments, the backgrounds, right, the pacing. Um, or for video game design, working on the characters and environments and 3D modeling for, for games. And then, like I mentioned, we also have uh, concept design as its own major at CCS. There are actually only a few colleges in the world that educate and prepare students to become concept designers. And they bring stories to life by envisioning every design element from props and scenery to costumes and characters. They help design everything an audience visually experiences in a live action movie or in a video game. Right. So, for example, they're more likely to work on a live action Marvel movie or maybe the design of a character for um, a video game for Marvel um, versus animated Disney movies. Right. That's not what a concept designer is going to work on. They're not going to work on cartoon characters. Um, but concept design um, is one sliver of the careers in the gaming industry, right? Which is why we have a video game design major at CCS. Our game major students learn how to conceptualize and build 2D and 3D CGI, right? So if someone's working on the 2D graphic and doing a rendering as a concept artist, we need still game designers to build those CGI graphics, right? And those skills allow them to create gaming experiences for you know, mobile apps, for augmented reality, for virtual reality, as, as well as you know, realistic environments um, and assets for film. So they can also do visual effects work. So if you love you know, animation or gaming, but you also love illustration, you'll be happy to know that our students will often take classes in both departments. Um, but this is more of what students are working on in illustration, right? So you see they're working more on 2D static imagery. Um, and these are the types of things that go into a career for visual development or comic books, graphic novels, or painting, right? Um, so if you're interested in those types of things, illustration may be a department to do more investigation in. Um, and then I know we have some students who are confused between visual development and concept design, right? Uh, but visual development is typically for 2D, 3D animated films and concept design again is for live action films and game. So if you want to work on 2D stylized design work for props or background and layouts or characters, you probably want to do more of a deeper dive in illustration and not concept design, right? If you're interested in doing those things for, um, for visual development, okay? So again, if you're interested in making the character environment move and come alive, then entertainment arts animation is probably a better fit. If you want to work as a character artist or an environment artist or a vehicle designer or you know, visual effects artist for games, you wanna work on augmented reality or virtual reality, then game design is the area that you may want to focus on. Um, and then just to illustrate how these things can pan out to a career, I wanna show you a few examples of alumni. So Chris Houghton is an American animator writer, producer, and storyboard artist. He's also a voice actor for a show of his own creation, uh, Big City Green, which is on the Disney Channel. Um, but when he first graduated from CCS, he was working at Nickelodeon as a storyboard artist, right? Working on 2D uh, storyboard and sequential storytelling for shows like Fanboy and Chum Chum and Harvey Beaks, right? Um, he also worked on Disney shows like Wander Over Yonder and Gravity Falls. So all 2D static imagery before he uh, created his own show. Dave Harden um, is a senior character animator and he graduated with his degree in entertainment arts. So he as a character animator has animated characters for films like Kung Fu Panda, Frozen 1 and 2, Ralph Breaks the Internet, Zootopia, Moana, and more. Michaela Nay Neighbor is a concept artist and texture artist for Blizzard Entertainment. She specifically works in the gaming industry on 2D art um, she's worked on, for example, 2D art for the world of Warcraft. Um, and now she's actually an art lead at Well Told Entertainment, which is a, a game design company that specializes in um, augmented reality and virtual reality. So her experience in the game program, or excuse me, in illustration, um, helped her with the 2D skills to work on this artwork that informs um, the work that she's doing as an art lead. So she moves games from prototype all the way to pre-production with the team that she leads. 
Dorian Campo is a lead designer and user interface, user experience designer at Activision. Um, and he develops game philosophy, he develops game mechanics, feature integration, and experience narrative um, for video games and experiences. Um, so he actually focused on, on game. Um, but his biography of games includes games like Lore of the Rings Conquest and multiple versions of Call of Duty, like Call of Duty Black Ops 2 and 3, uh, Call of Duty Ghosts, and Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Michael Marr is an illustration and concept artist who graduated with his degree in illustration, and he creates paintings that inform the visuals of production. So he's worked on several different movies and TV shows. Um, he actually um, worked on Cosmos and Space Time Odyssey, for which he received an Emmy nomination. And his latest job, which has been his favorite so far, um, was working on the Netflix series Stranger Things. So this painting that he did obviously informed some of the visuals for the production. Sarah Bromley is a graduate from the Entertainment Arts Program, um, and she is a built technical director for Double, uh, Double Negative, which is a visual effects company in London. Um, she's worked on uh, DC films like Justice League, um, and then she also recently worked on visual effects for Black Panther. So as a build director with the 3D knowledge that she gained in her CGI classes at CCS, she builds for films things that are either too expensive to shoot or something that doesn't exist in real life, right? Um, we don't have rocket ships or laser guns, right? So someone has to build those in computer graphics, and that's what someone from the entertainment arts program, you know, focusing on um, 3D graphics would be able to produce. And then Etna Tividad, um, he's done a lot of different things with his illustration career. Um, he, uh, because he's a visual communicator, he actually uh, started off working on um, automotive concepts uh, for Hot Wheel, uh, for Hot Wheels uh, design toys for Mattel. Then he moved into um, the the film industry. He worked on films like Forrest Gump, Star Wars 1 and 2. Um, he even designed the latest version of the Batmobile um, in the recently released Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice film. So he does concept art. Again, this is art that um, informs uh, the build out for, uh, for film. Now, I will mention that obviously Ed graduated in 1991, so that was before we had a concept design program. The program is a newer program at CCS, um, but he probably would have majored in concept design when he was a student if he wanted to do what he's doing right now. All right, so we are going to move on to the difference between crafts and fine arts. Why do people get these confused? Well, people, you know, looking to become sculptors or work with 3D mediums may feel conflicted about the differences between these two majors. Uh, both majors can help a student develop a material understanding and both can lead to a strong studio practice. Obviously, both majors are working with traditional and digital techniques to produce their work. They're both working with their hands, but also thinking very conceptually about the work that they're producing. Um, so what is the difference? Well, first off, you know, we're one of the uh, few colleges to actually have a standalone crafts department. You know, some colleges marry crafts with fine arts, but crafts is a standalone major here um, because it's about the skill building and material manipulation that's required to become a strong crafts person, right? Um, so rather than 3D work being a broad category, in our crafts department at CCS, you're really focusing your skills to have a mastery of making. And crafts majors at CCS have a deep focus on well, the craft. <laughs> That's what they do. Um, so that could be a deep, deep focus on glass as a medium, really working on understanding the breadth and depth of being a glass artist, or metal smithing and jewelry making, which is one of our areas of focus, or ceramics, or fiber and textiles, or furniture, right? So this student worked on, you know, small scale metal jewelry, but we may have someone who wants to become a metal smith and work on large scale metal fabricated sculptures. They would come and focus on crafts at CCS, or someone who's interested in weaving and understanding how to create textiles for the furniture industry. They come and focus on fiber and textiles. If someone is interested solely on ceramics, they want to work on ceramic sculpture work or functional pieces. They want to learn to make their own glazes. They come and specialize in ceramics at CCS. This is different from fine arts or art practice at CCS, which is where students build conceptual and critical skills that focus on the materials, methods, form, content, history, theory, and process of making art, art generally, right? 
This major is less about the in-depth mastery of craft and more about the freedom to create a, a customized path suited to the particular strengths and interests of a student. Um, so when they're done with the program, you know, they're going on to do a lot of different things, but as a student, they're thriving in a lively studio and seminar environment, and they're encouraged to work between a few different areas. That includes painting, drawing, sculpture, print media, video and digital media, installation work, and performance art. So they're not just making 3D objects, right? They're going and doing installations and in spaces. They're doing performative art pieces. Actually on this last slide, um, this is an installation piece uh, where a student is, like I said earlier, using video and digital media to create an experience that folks can interact with, right? So when you think about a fine artist, they're going on to become studio artists, community organizers, art educators, um, they're doing public artwork, they're curators, they're restoration artists, they work as art critics, art writers, some of them are entrepreneurs, um, and they're doing things in the entirety of the art industry, whereas crafts graduates go on to, you know, do very specific things like custom furniture or jewelry design or puppetry. Um, working on puppet design or lighting, they're blacksmiths, they're fabricators. Um, as some examples, uh, Ezra Norton is one of our graduates from our crafts department um, who is uh, an entrepreneur. He started Detroit Design Center with his brother and together they make furniture, sculpture, gates, railings, lighting, and other types of functional art for residential and commercial clients. So they've done things like make the giant D uh, that drops in Detroit on New Year's Eve. Um, they've worked with clients like Quicken Loans uh, or the Henry Ford Health Systems on sculptural uh, artwork that's on display. Brad Lawrence is uh, the founder of a psychedelic art company called Black Light Visuals. He's one of our fine arts graduates. Um, again, he was exploring a lot of different mediums at CCS. So he initially specialized in hyper-realistic charcoal paintings or charcoal drawings, um, but only completed two pieces after graduating before developing acute tendonitis um, in both of his arms. Um, so he had to pivot the type of work that he was doing. Um, and luckily, because of the exploration and fine art, he was able to pivot his drawing career into uh, blacklight art. So he actually discovered a new method of traditional paper marbling um, which he began to market with interactive body painting experiences at EDM festivals. So what you see on the screen here is uh, someone would dip their arms in this pigmented water um, and they would come out with temporary black light tattoos. Um, he then started to apply this technique to paint clothing items like shirts and hats and shoes. Um, and that's become his main source of income. Um, so he's an independent uh, you know, apparel company, uh, but he also does body marbling. So a lot of different things came from his fine arts path. Uh, Samantha Sheffman, after graduating with her metalsmithing and jewelry degree at CCS, began her career in New York designing jewelry and watches for internationally recognized brands like Betsy Johnson, Gwen Stefani, and Henry Bendel. And then her passion and knowledge for, you know, the art world led her to pivot to become a gallery manager uh, for a gallery in Chelsea, Manhattan, uh, before returning to Detroit to, um, you know, work with and start her own gallery, Playground Detroit. So it's a, actually a gallery and a, a creative talent agency. But this is the type of thing that a student would learn to create in a jewelry making and metal smithing focus at CCS, right? Um, very different from a piece of fine art. Speaking of fine art, this is Kevin Beasley. Um, after finishing his CCS fine arts degree, he went and received his MFA at Yale for sculpture. Um, and in his sculpture work, he does installation and sound and video work. Um, so again, multimedia experiences. Um, and he was actually just uh, called among the most significant young artists working today by the Institute of Contemporary Art in Boston, um, in the Boston Museum. Um, he's also uh, had his work featured in the 2014 Whitney Biennial, uh, which is a huge show put on by the MoMA or the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Um, and Huffington Post recently named him one of the 30 Black contemporary art makers under 40 you should know, right? So he's a fine artist uh, making waves in the contemporary art world.
And then lastly, April Wagner focused on glass at CCS um, and then went on to open her own glass blowing business uh, here in Michigan called Epiphany Studio, uh, where she now makes her glass sculpture and lighting fixtures uh, for clients internationally. We've actually been told that Vladimir Putin has a piece of her work in his private collection. Um, so you can start to see through these examples the differences um, in the type of work, uh, but also the depth of crafts that students in the crafts program are, are working with, right? So let's move on to topic number three, advertising design versus communications design. Why do people get these confused? Well, oftentimes they're both working in the same industries, right? So we can see art directors working in uh, graphic design firms and graphic designers work in, working in advertising agencies. Um, both sets of these uh, students use a variety of digital tools, both as students and graduates, right? So they're working in Illustrator, InDesign, and Photoshop. Um, and both work on projects for print media, multimedia, and emerging media. So what's the difference? Well, Advertising is heavily focused on concepts, ideas, and strategy for getting people to act, while communications designers are learning in-depth skills for visual communication using typography, color, messaging, etc. in three specific areas. So our graphic design students or communications design students are focusing on graphic design, motion design, and interaction design. So these here are examples of pieces that advertising students have worked on, right? It's not just about coming up with a new ad for a Fortune 500 company. It's about being able to communicate with multiple audiences in all avenues. That could be social media, it could be online advertising, TV commercials, billboards, print ads. Actually here I wanna show you an example of a student's TV commercial. So this student at CCS in one of our TV production classes uh, learned how to shoot, learned how to composite the background. Um, but really the point of this commercial is to tug at an emotional part of us to get us to think about a brand. And you'll see what brand shortly in this commercial. What's cool about this commercial is this is actually all shot by the student. She actually went um, on a vacation and shot this. Beautiful commercial, right? And this is the level of student work that we have in the advertising program. So conversely, this, these examples that you see now on the screen are examples from our communications design program. Um, so this is a program that was designed for where the industry is headed, right? It's not just traditional graphic design um, because students need to learn how to code, right? They need to be able to develop websites and mobile apps. They really are learning not just the core principles of print graphic design, but also how to move media and create interactive environments that really can make information more easy to digest, right? So they're working on branding, on packaging. Um, if you go somewhere and see an interactive display or experience, that's typically designed and possibly coded by someone with a degree in communications design, which actually makes our, our major at CCS pretty unique, right? So again, this experience with the students swiping around, they designed and coded that. So overall, the one key difference as well is that if you wanna get down to the minutia of things, our advertising students learn just enough to effectively convey their concepts and ideas, right? So they may be able to make a mock-up of a microsite that supports a campaign or, you know, make a, a reel demonstrating an idea for a mobile app that supports, you know, promoting a campaign on Dunkin' Donuts. Um, but the communications design students at CCS have a more in-depth understanding of graphic communication in the sense that they can actually not only design the app, but code it and make it work, right? Um, they can make a full print magazine and work on all the levels of hierarchy for that, right? Versus just a mock-up to demonstrate the idea. 
So here are some examples of alum from this major, right? Um, Bruna Camargo, she works as a senior content creator and social strategist. So early in her career, she actually worked at Ignite Social Media, which is North America's first social media advertising agency. Um, and at the time, one of her main clients was Olay. So she would speak on behalf of brands like Olay on Twitter and Instagram. She'd research and identify trends and strategize ways that these trends work for her client and then come up with ideas to speak about them on these platforms. So it incorporates writing and a bit of graphic design, but she also does photography, right? A few different skill sets. Brett Renford is the creative director and experience designer at Blue Cadet, which is an agency in New York. And he conceptualizes and builds experiences in space that use technology to connect people to stories. So for example, at one event, guests were given interactive maracas that when shaken, triggered visual fireworks on a digital display overhead, right? That's something that, or like you see in this image here, people could swipe and move their bodies and it would move the typography that you see in front of you. I mean, this was a project for Google. He's done projects for Intel, JetBlue, uh, the Whitney Museum of Art and more. Aston Davis is one of our advertising graduates and he has gone on to become a brand manager and art director for many companies like Reebok, Global Team Blue, Puma, Campbell Ewald, and more. Um, you, if you are someone who loves sports um, and watched the past Olympics, you may recognize some of his work as the global graphic designer for the Rio Olympics men team, uh, women and men, uh, women's team. Uh, but he worked on track uniforms for countries like Jamaica, Grenada, Cuba, Barbados, um, and more. And he notably um, actually designed the gear that Usain Bolt wore during his past win in the Olympics. So he came up with different ideas for the design of this, but he manages overall the voice and graphics um, for that company. That's what he did at the time. Todd Davis, or excuse me, Todd Smith, conversely, um, was a design director for Nike Global Football Equipment. So he came to CCS as an avid soccer player, soccer player that's what he loved. Um, and he, he was able to combine these two passions. So he works and leads teams of designers resp responsible for soccer balls, shin guards, goalie gloves, and more. Um, and he's leading them on the visual design, right? The graphic design that's applied to these objects. So communications designers can get jobs as graphic designers, user experience designers, web designers, um, you know, brand managers, and more. Um, they can go on to start their own design firms or work in a design firm. Uh, information designers also come from this uh, program. And advertising designers typically go on to become art directors, bloggers, social media managers, creative directors. They can go into PR as public relations writers, copywriters working on the taglines for things. So using the example that we see on screen here, a copywriter wrote the infamous tagline, just do it. That's what students learn in the copywriting uh, focus in our advertising design program. Um, and yeah, so there are a lot of different career opportunities for students who like design. There's different ways to focus on that. So let's now talk about footwear designers. We have a lot of students who have a passion for shoes, right? Either they're a sneakerhead collecting, you know, every possible pair of Jordans, um, or they're someone who loves high heels and just loves Gucci, Ferragamo, and more. How do they know what major to focus in at CCS? Um, because product designers obviously design shoes, but so do fashion accessories designers. Um, and both of them work in 2D, to flush out their concepts before moving on to making 3D objects. So who would I, what, you know, what major would someone focus on if they're interested in becoming a footwear designer? Well, um, it really boils down to the type of shoe a student is interested in designing. So fashion accessories, the program at CCS gives students head to toe preparation in the $51 billion industry that is fashion accessories. So these students are really learning to develop a broad set of skills um, for you know, coming up with their creative vision, crafting, and fashion business. So they learn how to conceive, make, and merchandise things like handbags, small leather goods, footwear, and accessories, hardware, like buckles, etc. So they, again, work from an initial concept to design, and they can actually make a wearable, usable piece of fashion accessory. They also learn the full range of fabrication techniques, supply chain management, and distribution. They learn how to forecast trends for the fashion industry, um, and they learn how to market their, their fashion ideas and brands. 
So these are examples of the type of footwear, the one typically one of a kind. Um, they can work on anything from you know full production for a company to really small uh, hand uh, handmade pieces versus prod design footwear, right? So when we look at prod designers, this area is all about solving a unique problem for a consumer, right? So while an accessories designer, you know, may envision um, and craft accessories that push fashion forward, typically prod designers who are working on footwear are working on athletic footwear specifically, um, as these objects solve problems for athletes, right? So they're working on a lot of things for Nike, Puma, et cetera, right? So they're not going to, you're not going to come to CCS and major in prod design if you want to design pumps or if you want to design, you know, Kohan gear, right? You're going to come to prod design if you want to make shoes that make athletes run better, you want to make sneakers that give people more endurance, et cetera. All right. All righty. So here are some examples um, of alumni from our product design program who are footwear designers. Here's Eugene, who actually designed Usain, shoes, Usain Bolt's shoes that he used to win the past Olympics. So everything he wore in the past Olympics was designed by our grads, but here's he designed the bright orange pair of Pumas you see on the left, but Chris Vela, Dewan Lawrence, Edmund Holmes, um, all the names that you see on the screen here are alumni who are working as footwear designers at companies like Nike, Reebok, Adidas, and more. Um, our fashion accessories design program um, is one of less than half a dozen in the country um, and the only in the Midwest with its specific concentrations, but it is also one of our newer majors at CCS. So we don't have a ton of alumni examples yet because I think we just graduated our first class of fashion accessories uh, designers uh, from CCS. Um, but again, they are working on all different types of fashion accessories um, and the shoes they're working on are vastly different from products that are solving problems. One thing to also think about are maybe some things to minor in. So uh, majoring in the opposite field of study could really give students an advantage in their career. For example, if you're a product design student who minors in, you know, fashion accessories footwear or we have actually a concentration for fashion business as a minor. Um, they may have more in-depth industry um, insights that can inform the way that they're prototyping and designing their shoes. Or they can take their prototype beyond just a phone model and actually make a physical shoe um, showcasing their ideas. But that's not the only thing fashion accessories designers are creating, right? They're not just designing shoes. So <clears throat> we have students who are interested in working on garments or entering the fashion industry um, broadly beyond shoes. And they may be confused between fashion accessories design and fiber and textiles design. Um, and that may be because, you know, both majors work with various types of fabrics and textiles to produce their work. Um, both can end up in the fashion industry and both again, know how to work with their hands to create objects that people can wear. So how do students choose between those two majors? Well, like I just mentioned, fashion accessories focuses on all different types of accessories. Um, and students in this program, they're really focusing on, uh, uh, you know, handbags, leather goods. They're not really creating garments in the fashion accessories design major. They're creating everything but the garment. So if you want a, a corset, a pair of gloves, a hat, you know, shoes, a belt, a wallet, um, those are things, these are the types of things that students are producing in the fashion accessories major at CCS, right? Versus fiber and textiles artists, these students are especially, uh, excuse me, are focusing specifically on fiber and they're building conceptual ideas and technical skills like weaving, dyeing, screen printing, embellishment, surface design, felting, sewing, quilting. They do know how to actually construct garments. So we have uh, graduates who are fashion designers who come from our fiber and textiles designer working on garments, um, but also costumes, right? They're knitting, they're crocheting, they're laser cutting, they're doing, you know, digital printing. So um, these are examples of the type of work students are doing in our fiber and textiles program. They're learning how to print on fabric. They're working on um, textiles that can, again, go into wallpaper and furniture. Um, they're also working on, uh, you know, art pieces. So this is actually a, 
a fiber fine art piece that's a sculpture entirely created from fabric. These are the types of things that students are doing with a degree in fiber and textiles. These are the, the things our students are producing in the program. So many fiber and textile artists go on to work as textile designers, color and material designers for large corporations or small studios, uh, while others create artisanal objects for fine art. Um, a great example is Nabila Najjar. She is one of our crafts graduates. She graduated in 2016 um, and she is a costume and fashion designer. So she's had her work in galleries. Um, she's had her you know, fashion work uh, on runways um, and in music videos for celebrities. Uh, but she's also worked on large scale fabric sculpture for display. She actually, um, for a recent show at the DIA, did all the sculptural artwork for their events, uh, event space for a particular event. So that's different from, you know, designing a specific pair of shoes or a handbag, right? That's different from fashion merchandising. So vastly different. Again, I don't have a ton of examples from our fashion accessories majors because uh, we're just getting them out of the door. So let's move on to folks who are interested in industrial design. At CCS, we have product design, we have transportation design, and we also have the furniture major, right? So it may be confusing for students who want to go into industrial design because those things are broken apart at CCS. And all of these majors make objects that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. They all work on both the form and function of products, and they all are considered transportation, or excuse me, industrial designers. So what is the, the big difference? Um, so one thing that's a huge difference is that they're specializing on a specific area in the transportation design major at CCS, right? Um, so while all of these majors are working on 2D and 3D renderings and 3D prototypes, the transportation design majors are doing this for vehicles. That's anything that moves, a helicopter, a yacht, a motorcycle, et cetera, right? At CCS, we've been teaching this for over 50 years. Um, our graduates account for 60% of the design team at Fiat Chrysler. You know, the lead designer, um, at GM, um, excuse me, the lead designer at Chrysler is a graduate from our school. GM Design um, employs 175 of our alumni, right? Our graduates are the key designers at sports car and startup vehicle companies, right? So if you're interested in designing vehicles that move, you may want to look at transportation design, right? Um, and this is something I want to emphasize. It's Again, not just cars, right? These students are working on mass transit. They're really thinking about how the future of vehicle design is shifting, how mobility overall is shifting, right? So they may be working on mobility for design and not just a specific vehicle. Um, they are professionals who are working on interior and exterior of, of the things that move us around this planet. So here's an example of an interior design project that's also a model. Right? Clay modelers um, come from our transportation design program as well as, as vehicle designers. Conversely, you know, product designers, they're creative problem solvers, but they're working on every other thing that is not a vehicle, right? So um, they're working on uh, athletic gear, toys, electronics, medical devices, housewares, office products. Um, and they're really thinking beyond trends and styling. They're really getting a deep understanding of complex problems, really researching the consumer that's going to use those objects, and then using critical thinking and design skills to innovate and create new products. And then what's different from that is crafts furniture at CCS is really more of a marriage between fine art and product design, right? So this is a really unique program in that they're making one of a kind furniture. They again, craftspeople, um, and they are focusing more on styling and aesthetics and craft of just making the actual object, right? So product design is less about designing a new chair and more about imagining and creating new ways of seating, right? Versus a craft art furniture student is thinking about designing a really, really beautiful chair and actually making that from scratch using a wide variety of uh, materials, whether that's glass or metal or wood, et cetera. So here are a few examples of alumni from these various majors who are all technically, you know, industrial designers. Um, Colin Turry, he actually specialized in furniture at CCS and is the co-founder and creative director at TAKD Design. 
So he's designed everything from lighting and furniture in a New York uh, boutique hotel to wooden bow ties to livable space inside of shipping containers commissioned by GM. Um, he actually recently won a competition to redesign Brunswick Billiards iconic gold crown table. Um, which if anyone doesn't know, they're like the best selling billiard tables in the world. Um, and uh, most recently he is designing turntables at Shinola. So again, crafting, he, and this is an example of his work, he's crafting unique pieces of work. Dong Tran graduated with his degree in transportation design and is a lead designer at Icon Aircraft in LA. And he worked on the production for the interior and exterior of the Icon A5, which is this plane that you see here. So it's the company's first line of sports planes. Ralph Zhao's is the head of design at Fiat Chrysler and oversees design for all of their divisions worldwide. Um, he was actually profiled on um, the first season of Netflix series Abstract, The Art of Design. So if you want to get an in-depth uh, look at his career as the lead, uh, the, the head designer at Fiat Chrysler, please check out that episode on Netflix if you have Netflix. Um, and then this is Veronica Scott. So she majored in product design um, and as a student, she took a class to design to fill a need and she designed a coat, this coat she's wearing here, that transforms into a sleeping bag. And it was designed to preserve a sense of dignity for people who are experiencing homelessness. Um, she was able to turn this idea of a product into a nonprofit company uh, called the Empowerment Plan. Um, and that company employs uh, people who are experiencing homelessness and teaches them the skill of fabrication. It teaches them how to sew and create these coats and they donate them to tens of thousands of people across the world. So she not only designed a product, but she also designed a business model that is solving the issue of homelessness here in, in, in Detroit and across the world, um, is, is helping people who are still in that situation. Um, and because of this work, she's actually been the youngest person to win the JFK New Frontier Award, which is uh, what's happening here in this image. Um, so she's creating you know, sustainable living and creating solutions for people experiencing difficulty in their lives. So that's the type of thing a product designer would do. But again, these are all industrial designers. They're all designing products for industry. And lastly, if you're interested in teaching, what is the difference between coming to CCS for art education versus going to another school and getting, you know, general education degree and learning to teach art that way? Um, people get these confused oftentimes because at CCS, our education is a teacher certification program and not a standalone major. Um, whereas other schools, you may just be a standalone education major, right? Um, the reason that our program for teaching art and design at CCS is unique is that we actually believe that our students should be equally skilled in art and design as they are in the art of teaching. So our art, edu art education program is set up in a way where it actually combines our one of our BFA programs, so a student can major in product design or crafts or transportation design or you know go down the list. They they focus on a major, and then simultaneously are getting their te teacher preparation courses done. So it's set up where you're doing two things, and when you graduate, you have your bachelor's degree in one of our eleven programs, and you also have that certification to teach kindergarten through twelfth grade. At CCS, this program is anywhere from four and a half to five years, with that last half year uh, requiring students to do their in-classroom teaching practicum for the, the certification requirement. So this is great because you don't have to go back to school, right? You don't have to go to school twice. You don't have to go study education, then go study art, right? You have an in-depth knowledge of both of those areas. Um, and this is probably the reason why we actually have a 100% placement rate for our graduates from this program because of the way our curriculum is structured. So it's 80% of your coursework in the studio learning art and design disciplines and 20% is in our education classes. Most other programs flip those percentages, right? So you're taking a ton of education classes and a tiny little bit of art. Um, so, you know, they're, they're not as focused on studio classes. And that makes a big difference if you sincerely want to be an artist who knows how to teach art, right? Versus a teacher who knows a little bit about art, right? And this is a program, um, the certification um, really allows students to be recognized across the U.S. and Canada through the Michigan Reciprocity Agreement. So these students can take their teaching certification, educate students, you know, 
in a variety of, of places. Um, uh, one thing that's unique about CCS as well is that we actually, in our, our education program, in our Taubman building, uh, which is one side of our campus, uh, we actually have a middle and high school, um, university prep art and design. So our students who wanna go and do their practicum don't have to step foot off campus, right, to go and, and step into a classroom and get some of those student teaching experiences. So that's the, the difference between those. So again, this is a program that is paired with a student's major. Um, unless a student already has their bachelor's degree, then they could just come and do the post degree certification. But um, for those students coming from high school or transferring to get their degree, it's a great way of getting two, um, two career paths in one. So those are the majors that I wanted to share today. I am going to cut my camera back on um, so that we can move on with the Q&A for today's presentation. And again, Carla and Patty will also be answering questions in the Q&A box for students or for parents who are entering their questions there. So this is a specific student. I'm gonna have either Carla or Patty answer um, Jarrett's question about um, uh, accepting credits from a specific school, but CCS does accept uh, transfer credit. Um, we're actually one of the Phi Theta Kappa uh, transfer friendly schools. Um, and we have a dedicated admissions counselor for our transfer students who can help you with assessing uh, whether both your studio and uh, general ed classes will transfer to CCS. But we do our best to make sure that students can have their credits placed. Um, for their further anticipated degree path. Um, also, if you are interested in multiple programs, so say seeing some of this information today made you really excited for both, right? You're like, I understand the difference between the two, but I want to do both now. We actually have it set up where you can major in one area and minor in another at CCS. So again, if you wanted to major in animation and minor in illustration, uh, you could do that. Or if you want to, for example, you're interested in visual development. So you want to major in illustration because we have, you know, specific courses and faculty member dedicated to visual development. Um, you could come and do that, but then also minor in animation. So you could learn from Tim Flattery, who's the department chair of our entertainment arts program. He is a concept artist um, and he's worked on over, you know, 40 films in his 30 year career as a concept artist. But then you can also learn from um, our illustration faculty, right? Um, so yes, a major and a minor is something that we highly encourage at CCS. And it's a great way of, um, of strengthening the programs that you're interested in. The name just came to me. I was trying to think of the assistant professor of illustration, Betsy Bauer. Um, she's had over a decade of visual development um, experience and she's bringing that industry knowledge to CCS. She's worked for Sony Picture Animation, Paramount Animation, DreamWorks, and others. Um, and so, you know, you can straddle the, the two worlds and get that knowledge uh, by declaring a minor at CCS. One thing I didn't cover in this presentation um, that I wanted to make note of is that we also have non-studio minors that can strengthen any of these things you're interested in. So um, we have things like creative writing, if you want to do script writing, but also want to work on, you know, filming in our digital film program. Uh, we have art history, if you want to become a fine art major and really get immersed in art practice, but also want to learn the history of you know, the fine arts movement. You can focus on those things through our, our um, liberal arts concentration. So we have art history, art therapy, critical theory, creative writing, visual culture, um, sustainability and social responsibility. Um, so those are other ways to, to, you know, get more than just one area of focus at CCS. You can get in the in-between too. <laughs> um, so let's see, any other questions coming in from folks? What are some of the internship opportunities for the illustration majors? That is a great question. We actually have, and I'm gonna have um, 
Carla or Patty at the link to our illustration page in the chat box, we actually have a list of all of the internships or a vast majority of the internships listed on our website. Um, so you can actually go and see all the different companies, but we've had students, um, I'm actually going to pull up the list now and, and, and give you some, some examples here, um, because outside of uh, uh, internships, we do a lot of different types of career uh, placement opportunities for students. Um, but let me go and pull up the list really quickly. So we've had students intern at Converse working on, you know, uh, designs for uh, textiles. We've had students working at Disney Consumer Products, uh, Fisher Price, uh, Mattel, Team Detroit, which is now Global Team Blue, um, the Museum of Fine Art, Moose Jaw, uh, the Museum of American Illustration, Armstrong and White, Avanti Press, they do greeting cards. Um, so we've had students work at, you know, advertising agencies doing art direction in their internships, working on pattern design, uh, working on toy design, you know, working on character work. So there's a lot of different types of internships that our students are doing. Uh, but one thing I want to make note of is that all of our, if you click on any of the majors at CCS, you'll see the different internship opportunities that we offer. But we also have things like industry day where um, companies come to campus and look at student work and review them for opportunities like internships, but also job placement. Um, and so in addition to the internships that you see listed, you also have another body of companies that are coming and reviewing students work. And then we also have uh, sponsored studio projects. So companies come and give a classroom a design brief um, and those students are working alongside their professor for an actual client right so as an example um, using you know fine art because we talked about them earlier um, uh, the local arena the little Caesars arena came to CCS and our fine art students were working on public artwork uh, for display and they're pitching their sculpture ideas to that actual client so while that's not exactly an internship because our internships at CCS are paid only, those are happening off campus. These are kind of like internships in the classroom where students are working with companies and getting real world experience that way. So a lot of ways that students are, are growing their, their experiences for the field that they're focusing on. So another person asked, is it easy or possible to change majors while attending CCS? It is definitely possible. I'm a testament to that I changed my major after freshman year at CCS. We have a lot of students who do that. One thing to know, though, is that our curriculum is set up in such a way that students are taking four years of studios in their desired major. Um, so, for example, if a student came in and chose advertising, that first year, they'd be taking their studios both first and second semester for advertising design. So if they were to switch to communications design, they then have to take those freshman level studios for communications design, which would mean they may have more time if they switch majors while they're at CCS. But yes, students can change their major at CCS. And oftentimes I know students, if they you know switch majors because they have credits from that other major, they're able to turn that into a minor. So um, it's a way of, of doing that if someone had the, the afterthought to, to change to a different program. Um, so hopefully that answered your question about changing uh, majors. And then, oh, someone asked a question about the most important considerations for putting together a portfolio. I'm actually going to have um, Patty or Carla enter the portfolio guidelines video um, because I want to make sure um, we're, we're almost at our time here today. I'll make sure we're focused on some questions about the difference between, uh, but we have uh, uh, both webinars and Instagram live recordings going through everything that we require for portfolios um, because there are some differences that we look for uh, for the different majors. You know, if someone's interested in concept design, for example, their portfolio is different from someone who's interested in crafts. So I want to make sure that we link the information uh, for our portfolio requirements in our chat box so you can get that information answered. One thing I want to make note of uh, before we end our time today here is if you have questions um, beyond the information here today, you, you've seen this information, you still, you have some inklings of what you're interested in, but you still want some more in-depth information. There are a lot of ways to 
uh, get more insights for these different majors, the, the easiest way is connecting with your admissions counselor and an admissions counselor on our team. You can do this simply by emailing admissions at studies.edu and we'll let you know who your admissions counselor is and they'd be more than happy to set up a virtual counseling appointment um, and talk with you either, you know, like this uh, through video or over the phone um, and really help you to explore your interests, your skills and your passion. But then there's also things like our virtual events. So we'll continue to have webinars. We actually have one coming up uh, soon, uh, diving into our interior design department, where you can learn more about what interior design students at CCS do, um, what their curriculum entails. And so there are a lot of different ways to, to grow your understanding of the program. And obviously, when we're all back in person again, when we're, when we're out of quarantine, um, we'll have in-person on-campus events, where you can meet with our faculty and our current students um, and learn from them firsthand what it's like to pursue <clears throat> not only the degree here at CCS, but a career um, in that path because many, many, many of our faculty are working in the industry that they're teaching about here at CCS. So um, there are a lot of different ways to get additional insights besides what we shared here on tonight's webinar. So it looks like that was our last question of the evening. I want to thank every single one of you for tuning in today for the difference between, um, I hope this information was insightful and you learned something new and we will see you at our next couch conversation. Make sure to uh, check back at studies.edu backslash visit to see upcoming events. Hope you all have a great night and stay safe.